Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Yeah, so model, um, yeah, so model is a basic object within uh, SAP Analytics Cloud. So it is mainly uh, used for representation of business data of an organization or a business segment. So you can use a uh, model for a basis for your story or analytical application. Uh, so the modeler is the place where you can create, maintain, and load data into the models. So in SAP Analytics Cloud, uh, models can either have acquired data or live data. So based on the type of connection you choose for creating your model, there are two types, as you know from the previous session, uh, previous topic. Uh, one is import and live. Similarly, in the models also, we have import model and live model, or import or acquired, anything can be called. And the other one is live model. So in import, you know, right, data is imported, copied, and stored within SAC. So whatever changes made to the data in the source system doesn't affect the imported data. So until unless you copy again, or modify again, or re-run uh, the schedule for importing, uh, until then the data won't be changed. Whereas in live, uh, data is stored only in the source system. It is not copied. Any changes in the source uh, data immediately will be reflected within the SAC model itself. So yeah, a model is a representation of large amounts of business data that uses common business terminology. Um, so for example, if you are running a, a retail clothing business, and your data might include certain, uh, you know, data types, like for example, data, uh, maybe quantity of each clothing type sold, prices, item descriptions, item numbers, you know, order dates, customer names, IDs, location, etc. So if you are running a, a retail business where you are selling, uh, you know, um, clothing, then uh, yeah, this can be generally the type of data that will be there in your organization. So that again depends on the different types of formation, different data types and data um, terminologies will be there. So for example, this is your sample data. So the picture above represents a small subset of data. Typically your business would generate thousands of rows of data to avoid dealing with these large amounts of data that require uh, using a database query language such as SQL, you can create a model within SAC with the dimensions and measures to represent your business data and mon manipulate directly in the application. So the creation of model is a crucial part in the data preparation. So if you are using an import model, we can directly manage to change it in the SAC itself. So when you are importing, you can make some changes and also do some transformations. All those things are possible. Whereas live connection, all the data manipulation should be done in the backend itself. So now coming to what is dimension and measure. So I think most of you would have already known this because you would have worked on BW and all. So a measure is something which holds numerical value and typically represent quantities that provide meaning to your data. So for example, sales revenue salary, number, uh, number of employees, etc. So usually measure is something like numerical, uh, which is used to math to mathematical operations to represent quantity or value, like sales revenue, something like mathematical, we can add to operations, you know, you can do some of sales average, same like salary also, and also number of employees. So anything numerical usually will be measure. Then uh, opposite of that is a dimension. Uh, this will give, you know, uh, represent the category that provide prospective on your data. For example, product category, date, location. So all this comes under dimension. Um, so one more example could be age. Age, even though is a numerical, you are not allowed to, you are not supposed to do mathematical operations, right? You can't do sum of ages or average. Uh, average can be done, but sum of ages cannot be done or you cannot multiply and do all the mathematical operations. So it is considered as a dimension. Similarly, ID numbers. So all the numbers that are there in the IDs, you are not supposed to do any mathematical operations there. It's there for uh, providing a category or unique perspective for your data. So that's why it comes under dimension. So that's about dimensions and measures. 
so next uh, moving on uh, selecting the right model for your data so uh, in sac again uh, based on the type of uh, requirement that is there for usage there is two models you would know generally there is analytical model the other one is planning model so analytical model are full featured models that contain your business data they are the more flexible type of model you would typically use an analytical model if you want to analyze your data and looking for trends and anomalies so if your requirement that you want to only do the read operation i mean reading or seeing the values doing historical data analysis uh, then you should always go for analytical models the opposite of is planning where you need to change the data write back the values change the values and do some uh, you know plan for your data then you should go for planning models so unlike planning model analytical models are not pre configured with categories like budget forecast so all the date dimension is available it's not required uh, to always have these categories and date uh, as mandatory you can remove them from the model from the design stage so in planning models there is certain requirement that you need to have this categories and date dimension these are two mandatory fields that is supposed to be there when you are doing creating a planning model whereas in analytical model it is not required you can remove any model uh, sorry any dimension um, irrespective of the requirement and also uh, yeah i think there is one mandatory condition you need to have at least one measure if you are creating analytical model so if there is no measures you might not be able to create analytical model at least you need to add a dummy measure uh, to create analytical model then the next one is planning so yeah as the name suggests this is mainly used for planning purpose so planning models are prepared and pre configured to help you perform business tasks such as forecasting you know to support and streamline the planning process with many of the shelf features to give you a quick start in the planning process so when working with this type of model in a story planning users can use a variety of features to update values in the model and create new values so mainly yeah planning means you need to update certain values you need to modify it you need to change and save it back to the uh, data source also so that's when you need to have these certain features that's mainly useful for planning purpose so in that case you need to always go for planning model so there are some of additional uh, out of the box uh, features that are available for planning models uh, when you create a planning model these categories will be there for budget plan forecast etc and also default time periods will be generated when you are creating a planning model so that will be useful for uh, you know doing the planning uh, operations and then auditing features will be there for traceability purpose in case if you want to know who changed the data who modified and saved it back then you need to have this audit details so they can th this is also available in the planning model then additional to that there is some security features uh, you know that makes it possible for you to restrict access to specific values in data grids to named individuals so there is something called data locking uh, all these are planning concepts so all these are uh, readily available when you create a planning model thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today